past? Uh, huge influence. Um, I started reading Cerebus around, I'd have to say in the 20s somewhere. Um, I, I, I was living in Manchester at the time. I remember I had to mail order in the pre-eBay, pre-internet days. Uh, there was a mail order service in England called Conquistador. And I spent an awful lot of money from my first salary job in Manchester uh, mail ordering back issues of Cerebus and Swords of Cerebus at the time was coming out. That, I, think, I think I started reading Cerebus from Swords of Cerebus. Um, I loved those painted covers on Swords of Cerebus. I think there were six volumes and of course there was a couple of Barry Smith backups and you know you say Barry Smith to me and I'm, I'm there. But um, I read the single issues right up into the mid 100s before I switched to the telephone books. But most influential of all, I think, were his notes from the president on the inside front cover. Because back in those days, people don't realize how hard pressed you were for information about self publishing. So um, Dave's notes from the president were an insight into the life of somebody self publishing. Uh, that was always my goal, um, to, as they say, uh, own, fully own what I fully created. It took me a long time to get to the point where I could do that. But Hip Flask and Elephant Men, which is the ongoing title from Image, um, I published the first three issues of Hip Flask under my uh, company name, Active Images. Direct consequence of not only Dave's notes from the president, but the Creator Summit, the 12 Creators Rights. Um, I never wanted to work for a company and sell my um, soul. Um, Dave always talked about that. Also, two creators in England, John Wagner and Alan Grant, who worked for 2000 AD, told me the other side of the story because they had sold their souls. They sold their creations and their work to Fleetway. John Wagner now owns a piece of Judge Dredd because he went into the office and told them he wouldn't write it anymore. Um, so he, those two were a big influence in terms of what not to do. And people like Dave and people like... Um, uh, Terry Moore and uh, the Pinnies at the time. There were very few self-publishers, creator owners. Scott McLeod, Steve Bissett was one of those guys that, that sort of uh, uh, thumped that drum. Kevin Eastman, all these guys, we listen to them. You know, I think the reason we have so many creator-owned books now is because those of us working in the mainstream in the 80s and 90s were getting uh, information about what to do and what not to do and it sort of sinks into your uh, life and comes out as your own work. So Elephant Men is definitely, it's funny because recently somebody was interviewing me and I realized that in many ways Elephant Men is like a cross between um, Cerebus, Love and Rockets and Planet of the Apes, which were my favorite books. Fantastic. Any, uh, any, uh, any plans on working with Dave in the future, perhaps? Doing I would love him to do a cover of Elephant Men, and he was very, very kind to me on his blog in 2007. He reviewed, I think, the first 10 or 11 uh, issues of Elephant Men, and I, I have to say, very insightful reviews. It's kind of scary when somebody looks under the lid and actually knows what's going on. But again, I think when you worked as a self-publisher, when you created your own characters, you do have that sort of insight to other people's work. So he was very kind and generous, and uh, I would love to have a Davidson Elephant Men cover. So. Bridget Starkings, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.